You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 6th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we leftist maniacs would still prefer that our Republican fellow citizens not die of stupidity, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, everybody. Hey, Blue Gal. How you doing? Hey, everybody. I'm fine. We have a, a new fake advertiser. We do. After which our fake lawyer might have to read a disclaimer, but... <laughs> You know, that's that that goes to the territory. So yeah, with this was inspired by alert listener Dexter, put us on to these guys, and we are proud to announce that this episode is sponsored by our new fake sponsor, Big Dick Energy. Men, the government won't tell you this, but there's a bug going around that makes it three hundred percent more likely that your flag will never make it past half mast again. That means permanent wang fail, boys, stuck in the floppy jalopy forever. Well, now the secret's out about the medical miracle that Big Pharma doesn't want you to know about. And we here at Big Dick Energy are bringing that miracle to you. Now, for a limited time, we're making this laboratory-tested wonder drug that elite Hollywood celebrities have already been using for months available to you for free. That's right, it's free. Supplies are limited, so don't risk a Cuban Missile Crisis in your bedroom. March on down to your local Walgreens or CVS and demand that they give you Big Dick Energy today. Lawyer disclaimer, we're just talking about the Pfizer vaccine, but don't tell the idiots because they won't take it. <laughs> <laughs> a free dick pill. That's what it is. It it's guarantees a... that you won't get that weak dick energy. No. From COVID. Yeah. Right. Big yeah. dick energy. You, you you need it, boys. You know you want it. Now, I don't know what we're going to do about the ladies, but I'll work on something lady chic, something, something pink, something frilly, you know, because that's what ladies want. <laughs> dick glass. <laughs> You know nothing. I'm sorry. I'm living in the 50s for a moment there. You know I'm, nothing, dear I'm glass. Bad. But I do know what men, <laughs> stupid men who are worried about their penises are worried about. It's either this or, or promise them guns. And I don't want to promise them guns. There's enough of that already. So uh, I, this, again, alert listener Dexter um, came up with this idea. And we'd like to thank him personally because it's it, it might just work. This might actually be a really good idea. Well, I think there's two things that are going to work. That might work, like you say. People understanding that COVID can give you a permanent problem in the bedroom. Yes. Is certainly should get attention. Mm -hmm. um, also, the fact that children are now dying of COVID. Yes. And I think that's going to have a big effect. I, I hope have so. a tiny little piece of housekeeping I want to share at the top of the show. Okay. Um, our angel nerd Tammy, our wonderful angel nerd Tammy, has a paying gig now. Oh, great! And but the the news for us is that she is working from like three to midnight on Fridays. Okay. So if you notice that the podcast is not going up on YouTube until Saturday morning, it's because I couldn't get it to her early enough on Friday, and that's my fault. Right. Uh but. I, she said, I'd love to thread the needle on this and make it work. And I said, we can try and I mm -hmm. will try. Mm -hmm. um, just depends on when we record and how it works. So we're going to do our best. Everybody has jobs. Everybody has lives. We have things we got to get done. So it's a particularly busy time of year for us because we're launching middle child to college this month. And yes. youngest child to high school. Youngest child year senior month. in high school. And yep. it's just getting back to school time is busy. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to do our best. And we love those couple hundred people who do listen to us every week on YouTube. That's terrific. We're glad to have you. Smash and we like don't want to make it inconvenient for you. So we're going to no. try our best. But um, it is available elsewhere. Yes. And we will make sure that it gets to YouTube sometime during the weekend for sure. We absolutely will. That's a, that's right. a promise. And um, if, if Angel Nerd wants to show me how to do it, I'm... Yeah, I mean, we could also do that. We could also add it to a, one of our lists of yeah. things to do. But she really wants to do it, and she's yeah. so good at making sure the Patreon people get it up, get it. Oh yeah, sent no, to she's, them. She's and, amazing. You know, we we this podcast would not be what it is without her doing right. The, the, the and she really takes care scene. of our Patreon people. She so does. I'm I'm glad 
for that, and I'm I'm really glad to have her on our team. So we'll yeah. we'll do our best. And uh, all right, you have a little kind of a Bible bitch thing for me to comment on. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, I figured I just first I'd chum the water. <laughs> um, you know, throw a little, throw a little chunks, chunks of uh, fake Christianity out there. Well, this was a weird story. There's a yeah. poll out that shows that the most devout Christians, or who people who report, yes, I mean, I think this is the important thing with polls, yeah. right? Uh-huh. People report that they're independents and they are no such thing. People <clears throat> report that they're devout Christians. They are absolutely not. Um, but this poll finds that those people who claim to be devout Christians are also. Um, more likely to be QAnon. Yeah. And QAnon isn't a religious movement, but it sure is a cult. And yes, absolutely right. um, these far right conspiracy theorists who, you know, have strong support for Donald Trump and adoration and consider him King David in the flesh and uh, yeah, so polling from The Economist and YouGov shows that among those who who tell pollsters that they are religious white evangelicals, they also have the most positive feelings for QAnon. Mm-hmm. And that's very sad, but it's yeah. not surprising. No, I mean, you might remember um, back in back in 2006, I did two things. I did a lot more than two things, but there were two things I did in 2006. One, I coined a term I've been trying to have it catch fire ever since called Christopaths, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. are sociopaths who are Christian, uh, people who who have um, absolutely need absolute certainty when it mm-hmm. comes to their idea of faith. They need yep. a book. They need, they need seven rules. And they need to live inside those rules. And the rules are all bent towards forgiving them for whatever the fuck they do. It's, for, it's self-forgiveness right. rather than... Right. And and it's also um, cult behavior in right. terms of us and them. And they don't want to seek after anything. They don't want to struggle with big questions. They just want a, a little book with answers in it. Uh, they, they, it's not Bibles. It's chick tracks theology. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, and, yeah. and it's, it's, you know, everyone who isn't me and my friends are going to burn in hell. And that right. makes them happy. That's what um, their religion is for. Yeah. Yeah. But I also wrote, um, wait, 2005, actually, it was a little red state fundy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which is about these people and the grip they had over the Republican Party and how the libertarians and the moderates and the centrists were all missing it. They were all missing that these people are the people who are running their party. These are the people who are knocking doors and dialing phones, and they believe crazy shit. They're dominionists. They believe the rapture is coming. They believe that their their Bible is basically one giant fucked up right-wing conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. evolves constantly because you know if, if Donald Trump is not going to ascend to the throne in August, maybe September. You know, it's it's an apocalypse. Well, now cult. It, now it's God removed him from office right. for a reason, right. and we just have to wait to see what Jesus is going to tell us. And who knows about better why than, Donald Trump was removed? Yeah, who knows better than a, a pillow salesman what what God's will actually is? Have you seen the painting behind him in his office of Jesus on the cross, and then? Overlayered with it. I don't know if this is painted on velvet or not. I can't mm-hmm. tell from the video. But Mike Lindell behind him has Jesus on the cross with a crown of thorns, and then painted behind him as if it's inside of Jesus is a lion. Yeah. A male lion. Right. And this yeah. painting is as big as his wall. You know, I have wondered. Um, because I don't know about you, but around where I lived in the suburbs and where I lived in the city, especially in the 60s and 70s, mm-hmm. um, there was a, a booming uh, market for painting, uh, if you're African-American, mm-hmm. um, wall art of you with some very sexy women next to you holding on to the leash, which has a panther on it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was, I, I saw a lot of these in Chicago Heights when I was partying down there. Mm-hmm, and they mm-hmm. were they were magnificent. They were amazing. But I wonder where these guys went. Where did these artists go? Oh, they're painting Mike Lindell's crap now. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's they got to do it somewhere. Well, and I'm sure Mike Lindell spent three or four figures for that yes. painting. You know. And, and the ones from the 60s and 70s and, uh, and let's face it, early 80s, were not religious iconography. No. They were... No. 
welcome to my pad. Uh-huh, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. welcome to and it was cool. This was this was, you know, this is This is my lair and here yeah. are my topless babes and yeah. I've got a tiger on a leash or a yeah, leopard was, uh, or a jaguar, I, whatever it is. Yeah. I, that that was some big dick energy there. That was an early <laughs> yes, big dick energy. Was. But no, this is not. And this you is, partied at these houses. I did. I did. I I I had a very unusual cross section of people I partied with, uh, <laughs> which, which I, I don't regret a minute of it. Um, I met some very interesting people. I met a member of the Staple family um, uh, who showed me the gold records on his wall. We were drinking at a cool. bar one night. Yeah. Um, he, he went out to pick up his girlfriend who was a stewardess and said, you know, hey, uh, she's got friends. Uh, why don't you go back to my place? And you know what? To my eternal regret, I have to, I have to say I didn't go. Oh man! Um, but we we got actually we're at a bar talking about um, um, theology, mm-hmm. and he and he introduced himself. He was like Perf Staples Junior or, or the third or whatever it was, uh-huh. but he was that guy. Uh-huh. So I yes, I, I met a whole bunch of interesting people in my life. None of which has anything to do with the politics of today, other than I bring all of this esoteric experience to bear on every word I say on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Speaking of people, I, knew I don't in know Chicago. how we're going to dovetail that into wishing Barack Obama oh. a happy birthday. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, no, no, stand back, stand back. Just have a seat. Have a seat. Have, have a cold beverage. Put your feet up. Um, speaking of people I knew in Chicago, uh-huh. uh huh. As you know, the reason Barack Obama is president of the United States today is because I was on the board of a group called the Independent Voters of Illinois Independent Precinct Organization in mm-hmm. Chicago when he was running for Congress, which he lost. And then he turned around and won the Senate race, and that was his ticket out of um, out of Chicago into the, in the White national House. stage, right? But I was on the the team that vetted him. Um, I met him and his lovely wife early, early, um, and we were both tall guys and skinny guys in a in room where the desks were designed for you know school children, so it was kind mm-hmm. of funny. Um, and I contributed to his campaign. Uh, I still have my Barack the Vote um, ticket stub. From with the with the thing along the bottom, no corporate donations accepted. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> um, so uh, long ago and far away, me and Barack, we you know we were just hanging out, you know, well, like we used to. Um, he did he wouldn't know me from at Adam that now. one meeting at that one meeting. There yeah. were probably two, but <laughs> he was a guy in Chicago uh, who was c- clearly on his way places, and he arrived. And today or yesterday, rather, was his sixtieth birthday. Yeah, and, and for his sixtieth birthday, he he he's throwing himself. A large party where he lives in his home with friends of his. Well, and he's, they've scaled it back. They scaled by it the back. Way. Yeah, uh, caterers come because that's what you do when you have money and you are you have um, a lot of uh, important friends. You have caterers cater your party, and your friends come to your party. Uh, this gave Fox News an excuse to do the favorite thing it has to do in the universe: complain about the uppity Negro who thinks he's better than you. Mm-hmm. There's a little mm-hmm. dash of of critical race theory. They harped on the fact that the oppressed Obamas can't have a birthday party without 200 footmen and valets, all about the private planes. Mm -hmm. Man, and you could just tell, listening to these Fox assholes talk about a man having a birthday party. Well, and Newsmax also went on about the lazy black man because he never did any work, you know. No, no. He just just lazed around the way. But this – they were so hungry for another bite at this. Then They they miss – uh, uh, Michelle Obama, mm-hmm. you know, the mooching Michelle Obama, the welfare queen Michelle Obama. Who wears Obama. a sleeveless dress just oh like God. Marjorie Taylor Greene does. She, she wears her arms around. <laughs> what kind of what kind of woman does that when she's in the public Marjorie eye? Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, well, that's, again, <laughs> the curse of memory brings brings, yes. it, brings it around. Um, and they miss Hillary Clinton. Uh, she hasn't done anything birthday party-ish recently, so they, there's no target to shoot at. But, man, Barack Obama has a birthday party for himself. At his home, and they went ape shit. They mm-hmm. just because this is their thing. Yeah. They, they miss having a black man to dump every racist trope in their in their in their entire galaxy, in the entire lexicon on every day. That is how Fox News sustained itself for eight years. It did. And Drift Clash, you know who is regardless of how small they make this party. Uh huh. You know who is going to be at Barack Obama's party? Who? Mrs. Barack Obama. Yes, she Michelle will. Obama, his wife, is going to be there. She will. Singing and having a cake. Yes. And, put, and probably putting her arm around her husband and giving mm-hmm. him a kiss and I wishing it, him a happy, happy birthday. They seem like a very affectionate, happy couple. Well, uh, Donald Trump turned 75 as his last birthday had a party at Mar-a-Lago, and his wife wasn't even there. Well, she was busy. Um, 
<laughs> she was she was up in her room looking at pictures of the Canadian Prime Minister going, <laughs> Oh, I could have married so much better. Oh my God. Yeah. I thought she was upstairs tearing up copies of Vogue magazine with yeah. Jill Biden on it. Yeah. I don't want to sully uh, the our, our wishing of President Barack Obama a happy 60th birthday. Mm-hmm. May you celebrate 60 more. Mm-hmm. Um, there, I, I, now is not the time to go into the, all the things that I think he did that were that were wrong and were mistaken because every president does that. Today is the day to celebrate the fact that he served for eight years and he um, he left the country better off than when he arrived in the That's White right. House. That's right. He sure did. He sure as hell did. And he left behind... A pandemic playbook, which uh, yeah, he did. The, the Trump administration promptly shredded because it wasn't going to personally enrich Donald Trump, um, and because there is no pandemic, if you just, just don't count people, if you just keep them off the sh- offshore and refuse to count them, then there is no problem. And don't uh, test them either. No, no. The, the four years of backlash that we suffered under Donald Trump, um, that that was what it took to finally slap. The, a handful of never Trumpers awake to what was yeah. going on in their party. Yeah. And believe me, they've been celebrating their keen insight and noticing that the <laughs> Republican since Party about ever how right since. they've been for they've three minutes. They've made a whole fucking industry out of it. Oh, look, I was right all along, man. These guys for are three fucking minutes crazy. you've been right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's great. Oh, uh, you have a book deal and you have you have a book deal too, and you have shots. Oh, great. Okay, that's cool. And what about ha- what about before two thousand? No, 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 no. That's the old, that's the before time. We don't talk about that. Okay. Drift Glass, we have someone else we need to celebrate. Yes. And that is a young couple named Kelly and Chris. Yes. They yes. are our family members. They are. Who had a wedding last they weekend. They did. They and did. And we got to go. Mm-hmm. And the girls went with us. Junior dude is out west still. But is. middle child and youngest child went with us to this wedding. Yes. And this is one of those pandemic weddings where they yep. actually got married last year. Yep. And uh, since that time, since over a year ago, they had they got married. Uh, they've had a baby, and yes. so we got to meet little Kevin. It was basically um, Kevin's unveiling, and there was a wedding attached to it, right? Know? Yeah. And Uncle Driftglass got yeah. to see Kevin, and that was very important. Yes, and he and I had a long and serious conversation. He grabbed my finger. It was it was awesome. It was awesome. It was just glorious. And and anyway, it was up in the Chicago suburbs. So we went up there and then it turned out there was something else going on in Chicago that weekend. Lollapalooza. Lollapalooza. No, no, I'm not talking about Lollapalooza. I'm talking about the Chicago yarn crawl. Oh, that I I remember. uh, Yes, I remember that. That Yes. Never mind Lollapalooza. La, 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 Lollapalooza. Yarn stores were doing special things up in Chicago. They were. They were. So I went to a couple of suburban yarn stores. We did not go to downtown yarn stores nope. because of Lollapalooza. Because of Lollapalooza. <laughs> no, no. I, I, like you and I have been stranded in Chicago driving at night during Lollapalooza. During Lollapalooza. And, and it's a traffic nightmare. And so. I have, I have, you know, I drove in Chicago for 25 years, so I do know my way around, but it is not a place you want to be during a downpour, yep. during everybody from Lollapalooza heading for the, for, for wherever they're going. The subway or wherever they're going. Yeah. yeah. So the L, the L train. So yeah. we just avoided that. I, we had a lovely view from our hotel of Chicago in the distance or the loop in the distance sort of floating mm-hmm. in the air. Yeah, that we stayed great. outside. We got to see city. your dad. And we visited my dad the yeah. second night. Yes. Yep. And uh, so that was great. And we did talk with him mm-hmm. about Pennsylvania politics. We did. We did indeed. Uh, he, he prefers Connor Lamb for he Senate. Does. And that mm-hmm. is understandable for him. My dad, because my dad is from Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And so uh, North Side, don't forget. North Side. North Side. <laughs> if you're going to talk Pittsburgh, you know, you have very specific areas of the city. And he's from the North Side. Uh, and Connor Lamb is from that area. And they're, they're, Pennsylvania is Keystone State for a reason. It touches huh. New York. It touches West Virginia. It touches New Jersey. And it touches yeah. Ohio, right? Mm-hmm. And so Western Pennsylvania... Has is. an identity very different from the Philly area. You mean Pennsylvania, right? Right, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was understandable. Now, how my dad will vote in the general election is on the record. He's yeah, <laughs> straight Democrat. Are yeah. you kidding me? What, what the hell? <laughs> he was very clear about that. <laughs> he 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 imposed that upon his granddaughters. Yes, straight Democrat. Right. <laughs> so yeah. that that was good, and and. Uh, Middle child said, you know how I vote, Grandpa? 
by mail. <laughs> <laughs> So yes. She was being a little snarky, but a uh, straight Democrat, yeah. he said to her. I, I, I could just hang back and go, excellent. 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 <laughs> this is all working out. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes. And he's a member of AFSME and, you know, union yeah. and all that. So uh, very much, uh, it, it was good to have that help along to understand that Democratic politics is in the blood of it this is. family. And that's that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So um, next on our list is Sean Hannity. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> right, it's a little bit of whiplash, but everybody just Whew. relax, breathe. Yeah. Sean Hannity. Go ahead. Sean Hannity on his radio program. First of all, they've all been complete assholes about the Olympics. Yes. All yes, of them. All, all the time. Assholes all just the time. Unbelievable. Yeah. But on his radio program this week, Sean Hannity flipped out about... <laughs> The fact that the Paralympics have their own flag and they're going to redesign it. Uh-huh. And he said, you know, I think the U.S. flag should be enough for any of us. Yes. And many, many people pointed out to him that <laughs> January 6th, insurrectionists took down the American flag from the Capitol and put up a Trump flag. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They were carrying Trump flags and Confederate flags. And they're, these are your viewers, Sean. I don't know if you know that because Sean Hannity – is not very bright. Also, uh, Fox News headquarters has a Fox flag right up next to the American yeah. flag. It's about two inches lower, I think. But Sean never goes into work. He records from his house. So, uh, you know, he might not have noticed that there's a Fox flag out this, in the uh, air. But this is just taking, you know, rip, ripping whatever the headline is today. Yep. Maybe it's a tan suit. Maybe it's a certain kind of mustard and just, and whipping up outrage over just shit. You have to make up, make up some problem with the Paralympics. Right. Right. Because the American flag isn't good enough for people who have missing limbs, winning swimming races. Right. Which is just that commercial about staring that you and I have seen many times. You know, people stare at me, go ahead and stare. And then he's winning, you know, races at swimming. Yeah, because you know when you're a world champion, people are going to stare. People are going to stare at you, and and there he is swimming faster than I can swim at all. Just so remarkable. Well, this, but, and this, but let, so what can I? How can I argue against it? Well, I'm going to fight over him about a flag. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this is this is just the same thing you talked about at the top of the podcast, which is mm-hmm. these quote unquote devout Christians who are who are not that at all belong in it members of a cult and the cult needs constant, constant, um, ritual hatred. Yeah. Of outrage the left. juice. Yeah. They, they need, yeah. they need to hate the left every day. That's part mm-hmm. of that's, that. That is the statements of the cross for these people. They, they need something to hate people like you and me and our listeners like every day. Mm-hmm. And it was flag pins and then it was something else. And it's, it's all, but it's always something. That is why the idea of reasoning with these people is ridiculous. Because they, they, this is who they are. This is the loop in their brain that goes around and around. And Sean Hannity rides it to being a multimillionaire. Milks yep. it for all it's worth. There's yep. no saving these people from themselves. Because, $2 million dollars a month Hannity yeah. makes. Yeah. Yep. So the idea that he would just pull out of the... Because I'm convinced, as I have always been, there's a box of, of scrap paper at Fox News that people just toss in whatever's happening on a given day. They pull out and go, go be mad about the Paralympics. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do that. And it, it is it is like some game of Mad Libs. Here's here's yeah. some words that you're going to have to put in, in your in your broadcast. And Sean Hayes is really good because he he knows the basic text is the left are evil, the left want to kill your babies, the left are monsters, they drink blood, and blah blah blah. Paralympics flag, and it doesn't really matter what the 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 um, the, the sprinkles are on top, as long as the cookies, as long as the cake is always, the left is evil, the left is hateful. Don't listen to anyone who tells you anything that isn't coming through of the Fox News broadcast. Because mm-hmm. only we can be trusted. And so it's just a different type of drug every day, but it's always the same drug. Hey, Dirk Glass, I, to dovetail into this topic, I just want to point out to you, I read our um, Apple podcast reviews which are mostly very very nice really mostly well i I work on them every day so (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, I do try. <laughs> Mostly very, very nice. And we thank you so much for leaving a review at Apple Podcasts or on the Apple Store. Uh-huh. Um, the ones that are have have not do not have five stars. Right. Um, ninety percent of those mentioned David Brooks. <laughs> yeah. You mean <laughs> so like I'm I should sensitive I should talk about, to that. I should talk about him more. Is that what they're saying? No, that's no. not what they're saying. No. Well, I got a bunch of I got a bunch of social media incoming saying, "Oh God, you got to talk about David Brooks this week." Oh my God, it's, I, it's worth- so funny. It's yeah. it, it goes both ways. It is. Yes. So you cannot talk about David Brooks again. To Oh my God, send this to Drift Glass because yeah. it's David Brooks and we want you to particularly to rail against him. Well, and this week, it, it always does my heart good when people who other don't know people. Nor- other people, <laughs> uh, I'm not completely out there with my dick in my hand going, hey, hey, please, for God's sakes, pay attention. This guy is very dangerous. He has been yeah. very dangerous for a long time. He is the the emperor, the pope. Of the whole both sides do it movement. He's been doing it for decades. The thing that has fucked us over is not the Republican Party. The thing that has fucked us over is the Republican Party not being held accountable by people who should fucking well know better. Mm -hmm. And the Mm -hmm. way they're not held accountable is by dispersing all blame by blaming both sides. And the Mm -hmm. guy who's been doing that in the New York Times and on Meet the Press and the Atlantic for 20 years is and, David and Brooks. Be, being known by everyone else in the media as the nation's public intellectual. Oh, he's, uh, he, and he's he's a humble man. And he's, and he's a glory. Untouchable. He's, he's, he's really a warrior poet is what he is. Yeah. <laughs> and He's a know, shitty husband. I'm a big man. Who's, oh, there was a, <laughs> there was a great re- reprint that I'll get to. And, well, actually, I'd like you to tackle that. Okay. Uh, but I always get you know thrilled when somebody else talks about David Brooks. Because yeah. I don't know. The, the Brooks watchers out there, and there are basically four of us, so. <laughs> um, but you will have noticed that David Brooks, his entire career has been writing two columns a week for the New York Times. That's it. I could do that in my sleep. His whole career, everything, all, all the money he gets from books, everything he gets on the speaking tour, it's all dependent on cranking up 1,600 words a week for the New York Times. Except he doesn't do that anymore. He does one column a week for the New York Times. Because he's that fucking lazy. Because mm-hmm. why do two when I could just do one? So he gets his yayas out by going over to the Atlantic and writing big sprawling pieces that are just as horrible as these smaller pieces, but with a lot more words, <laughs> a lot more epistemic closure phrases, a lot more fancy language that I understand. But if you just look through it, it's always oh, the same bullshit. It's just a souffle of bullshit instead of a cookie of bullshit. And uh, because it's in the Atlantic, it's like, oh, this this asshole writes for them now too. How did that happen? Well, you know, he has friends there, and so much to my delight, uh, Jill Filipovic on the Twitter and Ily Mistal on the Twitter uh, entered the chat um, because David Brooks wrote three thousand words or so in the Atlantic about how the the uh, bobos, the the intellectual elite, have ruined this country. Now those that that's him, by the way, but. It's it was this long discursive. Don't bother reading it. It's just awful. Uh, and so I'll let Jill speak first. You could call this something like a bunch of thoughts about white people, and mm-hmm. it would be more accurate because none of it is true. If you remember that immigrants, Jews, black people, Latinos, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all exist, and their historical treatment and present behavior breaks this thesis. Yeah, his thesis was there's three groups of people in the in the country when it worked great: the elite, the the wealthy, the middle class. And the working class, and then and then the, the, and then things fell apart, and the the elite and the intellectuals pulled the ladder up, and everything went bad. It's like, and now on to Ely Mistal. Ely Mistal, um, oh, I see. David Brooks has once again attempted to explain the entire left right divide without once analyzing or even mentioning the racial antipathy of mm-hmm. the current whatever whatever whites only class he now identifies. The closest he gets in tr- is, is trying to explain how the creative class white people have come around on immigration as if that's a bad thing and how that has pissed off or, quote, left behind the MAGAs, never once explaining why those MAGAs can't, you know, keep up. He basically reduces the entire modern post-boomer push for civil rights for minorities and the LGBTQ as some kind of performative strategy by the elites to get back at their parents. This crap was written in 2021 and isn't on the Daily Caller somehow. Thank you, Ely. 
I appreciate that. That takes the burden off of me. It is incredibly encouraging to me when people, there's a breakthrough moment Mm -hmm. when when what Mr. Brooks is writing is so bad and so uh, omnipresent and so stupid and so clearly written from his myopic, gated community, privileged white guy perspective, which he does not understand and does not recognize as a thing. Because he's a narcissist. Yeah, because he's a narcissist. And, and, you know, somebody can't be this wrong for the last quarter century without either being a complete narcissist or being, I think on on a certain level, he's fully aware of the fact that, you know, he's never apologized for the Iraq war. Mm -hmm. He's never apologized for any of this shit he's written. He's never acknowledged that he wrote when it, that the whole thing, and, and I hope you get to this in a minute, where he wouldn't even acknowledge he was divorced, even as he was writing about the importance of staying married and being married. Um, and yours truly, your your very own drift class is the guy who caught the story when the Washington Post didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Washington Post had a whole thing about, you know, we, we heard these rumors that David Brooks is divorced, but we can't find anything. He's not filed anywhere. And I wrote a thing going, yeah, you exhausted every lead except for looking at a- any publicly available video and noticing that David Brooks doesn't wear his wedding ring anymore. Right. And he was a secret divorcee for two or three years. Two or three years. Until Charles Lamb on C-SPAN said, by the way, I hear you're divorced. And you could just hear him shit himself. Yeah. And he yeah. said, well, you know, I can't talk about it legally. Uh, but yes, I'm divorced. Well, you used to write against divorce. I never wrote against divorce. I never did that. I never know. That's not true, which is you know utter bullshit, mm-hmm. which is what David Brooks does when he's actually cornered with his own writing. More than course. once. More and than he, once. He just he's lies that. about it. He just fucking yeah. lies about it because yeah. it flies in the face of his persona. So take it away, Blue Gal. Oh, I just, there's this great post that uh, was tweeted to both of us <laughs> by uh, du- du- Duquesne PDX, I think is how I think he's that's pronounced it. Yeah. Passed along the chump lady. Yeah, Chump Lady. And mm-hmm. it is about the column that David Brooks wrote about his divorce. Yeah. Leaving and cleaving. Yeah. Which God. is a 2015 column about him leaving his wife, although it's written entirely in the passive voice. <laughs> and it's, we'll put it in our links. It's just worth going over and reading and reading the comment thread mm-hmm. because, uh, Women have seen men like this before. <laughs> yes, yes, they have. Yes, they and, have. And uh, his hypocrisy and uh, what a just what a mean, rotten person he is in this. Yes, column. he is. He is. He in absolutely this particular is. column, mean to his family, mean to his ex-wife, and uh, patting himself on the back over and over again about you know about cheating on his wife and it, it, and leaving her for. You know, someone who was born just before he married his first wife. <laughs> right. And, and, uh, the, and the the idea, this is, and I, I do want to emphasize this. People like that have an enormous megaphone. Mm-hmm. The problem is not the fact that there are big megaphones floating around the world. The problem is people who control them are by and large terrible. And they mm-hmm. use them for petty vendettas or they use them to advance terrible causes or they use them to excuse themselves or they use them to protect their friends. And it is um, amazing to me that the industry that is chartered and, and brags about, and, and it's the only reason for existence, the media, the only reason the media exists is to tell the public important stuff that's secret that they should know about. And yet there's this endemic corruption and back scratching and Chris Saliza-isms and Chuck Todd-isms all over the media. Everyone knows what the fuck the deal is, but nobody talks about it. And mm-hmm. that's in an industry where talking about why horrible shit keeps happening because of secret deals going on is supposed to be your stock and trade, which is why I do not trust the media at all. Because right. nobody, nobody has had the balls to explain to me why Chuck Todd still has a job. Or why David Gregory had a job. Or, or why, why David Mark Brooks Levin a is a best-selling author. Right. Nobody <laughs> – well, Mark Levin lives in the Fox News ecosystem. So that's yes, understandable. Yep. But the people who who pretend to be above it all and who just – they're awful. But the people oh, they who pretend put, to be balanced. Is that what yeah, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, but the people who put them in those chairs have names and make decisions. And there's all kinds of corporate malfeasance that you can read about in the newspaper, but you never read about the malfeasance in the media Mm -hmm. where people who are horribly unqualified or just outright corrupt or have a terrible agenda are kept in positions of authority by Mm -hmm. some market force that they will not share. 
And I, I await the day when someone at MSNBC on their last day there says, here's the deal. Chuck Todd has pictures of the president of NBC naked with a bunch of chickens. And, <laughs> you know, oh, OK, now I understand. But the, but but I need to there's, the, there's a reason for it somewhere. And the fact that the as I said, the industry that is exist to tell people what's really going on, refuses to tell what people what's really going on in their own industry is an example of sort of the turducken of media corruption. Yeah, it is and corrupt. Yeah, it is. Anyway. Anyway, I want to get to Mark Levin. Yes, please. Because he's smarter than your average Hannity. He is. You know, you he's know. very smart. And he's a southern calming voice, just like Laurie <laughs> no, Ingram. Doesn't. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> but um, this weekend, uh, Mark Levin once again called for the impeachment of Joe Biden. Oh, good. And I for... think it's really important to understand why. Why he's saying impeach Biden. Mark Levin understands that there is such a thing as American history. And he does not want Donald Trump to be, Donald Trump's two impeachments to be this blip that appears in the timeline of American history. So he really badly wants Biden to be impeached because then there's two blips and Donald Trump doesn't look like the incredibly corrupt, evil person that he is long term. As as historians look back, it'll be, oh, and, and we were so divided that parties were impeaching each other's presidents over and over again. Right, right and left. It was just crazy. It was just George crazy Bush. how they were using the impeachment process to argue political difference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so Mark Levin wants to impeach Biden for anything. Right. He's thrown out this uh, rental moratorium, this eviction moratorium, as a reason to impeach sure. <laughs> Joe Biden. <Why> and you <laughs> know what? If if they get the House, they will. Well, they, they'll try. That's right. Mm-hmm. They will. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, as I said in my post, I if we had actually, if that's actually a legal thing where you could impeach a president over crazy policies, we would have been impeaching Trump once a week. Sure. Not just twice in mm-hmm. one term. <laughs> well, they impeached Clinton for lying about a blowjob. Right. Right. So this is, and again, you're absolutely right. Mark Levin is trying to, is to put his thumb on the balance of history to say, well, this right. is just something everybody did. Yep. So don't look at Trump and, and my living in his bunghole uh, as unique or, or different. It's just everybody was impeaching everybody. It was the 70s. We were all doing a lot of coke. No one knows what happened. <laughs> no one knows what Let's happened. Let's all move on, which right. is all bullshit. Right. Right. So that's why that's why he's doing it. it also makes his base feel terrific to know, oh, this is so outrageous and unconstitutional. He must be impeached. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they, were, they did that with Obama. They sure. were constantly talking about impeaching Obama when there well, were absolutely no grounds to do it. And there yeah. were there were congressmen who were saying, we're, believe me, we're trying to find something to impeach him on. Because it mm-hmm. was like, as with Clinton, we're looking for something we can reverse engineer into enough outrage to get him uh, on the stand. Right. So we can cross-examine him and then right, impeach him. they have nothing else. Yeah. Well, but, they, ha- they literally have nothing. But again, the binding force on the right is hating the left. And, and delegitimizing... Democratic leadership. Yeah. And that's, they essentially impeached Hillary Clinton over they Benghazi. They, well, they impeached her for 30 years, for 25 for 30 years. They years. beat on her yep. for 25, 30 years. Yeah. And with the help of the dirtbag left and Matthew Dowd and all the rest of them, uh, she lost the Electoral College. Yeah. Because yep. they thought they could beat on that pinata forever and they'd still be safe from Donald Trump being elected. And when it turned out not to be true, they all did the Pontius Pilate. Nobody they had their authorship hands. of that. I don't know what you're talking about. No, <laughs> we, one's responsible no one for saw anything. this coming. Yes, yeah. right. No one did anything. Hillary Clinton saw this coming. Now, there's a through line over yes, the last 30 years mm-hmm. in Republican politics that manifested itself in the 90s and is still with us today. And that man's name is Newt Gingrich. Mm-hmm. And this week, Newt Gingrich said something racist and evil. <laughs> Shocking. I'm not, I know. And of and course, he blamed Democrats. Yes, of course he did. Uh, a he, noun, he, a verb, blame Democrats. That's <clears> Newt <throat> Gingrich's oh. shtick. He went on Maria Bartiromo's show, uh, who has fallen so far she will never recover. Um, and to to you know, with his tan and his silver hair, 
um, fresh from his getting kicked out of the Vatican, um, to tell us the left is bringing immigrants to the United States to get rid of the rest of us. So he's Nazi gone, replacement theory. Gone full Nazi replacement theory. And everyone got up in arms and, and oh my God, New Gingrich is saying terrible shit. Terrible, terrible shit. My God. New Gingrich is awful. And he's trending on Twitter. And I just sat back and watched and watched and watched and said, you know what? Somebody out there should remind people that New Gingrich has been saying terrible shit for 30 years. In fact, his only card trick over the last 30 years is going on TV and saying despicable shit. And that's it. That's all he does. That's all he's he been doing. He takes the latest outrage from the headlines so that he's timely. Sure. And he adds, I blame Democrats for yes. this. And so if 19- somebody gets murdered, if somebody murders their own children, that was the- Susan Smith case. Susan 19- Smith case. This was 1994. Think about how long ago it was that Newt Gingrich said that this vividly reminds every American how sick the society is getting. The only way to change it is to vote Republican. Mm-hmm. Liberals killed, made her kill her children. Liberals made message. her kill her children. And yeah. before that, slightly before that, Newt Gingrich was out there pumping out his go pack thing, which mm-hmm. is teaching all the Republicans how to lie and lie and savage and and uh, slander the left and Democrats on camera, on, ca- on microphone all the time. And so and- when Ben Dominic goes on Fox and says the radical left wants hates your babies, mm-hmm. hates babies. He's just ripping a page out of a very old Newt Gingrich playbook. Yeah. There, there was a, a New York Times editorial called The Politics of Slash and Burn, September of 1990, about what a sick fuck Newt Gingrich is. And stepping up the invective, use words like these to describe the opponents. These words work. And the words were self-serving and bizarre and shallow and corrupt, et cetera, et cetera. Um, people have been written books about Newt Gingrich, about burning down the house. The Atlantic has an article about the man who broke politics. Time magazine reported how Newt Gingrich laid the groundwork for Trump's Republican Party. Steve now, Kornacki led his red and blue book with Newt Gingrich being responsible yeah. for this tremendous divide in our politics. But yeah. here's the thing. Newt Gingrich should have been contained like Mark Levin. The virus that is Newt Gingrich, the pernicious evil virus that is Newt Gingrich, should have been contained to the Fox News ghetto all these Except years. Except for Meet the Press. Except for a guy named David fucking Gregory. Right. Who was appointed the, to to run Meet the Press after Tim Russert died. And if you look at the Washington Monthly Magazine from December of 2009, the most popular guest on Meet the Press that year was Newt Gingrich. He was on five times that year. He appeared every other month. This is not a thing that anyone had ever done. This is something that nobody ever did. And David Gregory, for reasons, again, no one in David Gregory's profession will ever explain to anyone, took it as his personal mission to continually rehabilitate Newt Gingrich's professional reputation by every time Newt Gingrich went out and said some racist, crazy, awful, bomb-throwing shit, wait 30 days, invite him on the show, and then never ask him about it. But treat him with enormous deference and respect. Mr. Speaker, tell me this. Mind you, the times he was on Meet the Press, he'd been out of power for 10, 15 years. Right. He'd been, and and shamed out of power. Yes. In a disgrace, he was removed from office in a disgrace by his own party. Yeah. And David Gregory took it upon himself to personally rehabilitate Newt Gingrich's reputation every time he fell down and he fell down a lot. That is how the Gingrich virus spread into the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. It was David Gregory and, and, and assholes like him with enormous megaphones that were given to him, given to people who would roll over her Republican lies and both sides do it everything. Remember, David Gregory was fired for bad ratings and replaced by Chuck Todd, who was equally awful. So NBC wants this to be the case. And the reason the Gingrich virus got out of hate radio and the right wing was people like that giving it the imprimatur of the respectable mainstream meet the press media. And that's how Newt Gingrich has survived for 30 years when he should have been wiped out of existence. He should be selling hawking books out of the back of a fucking pickup truck. Mm -hmm. But he's not. He's respectable. He was the layabout husband of the Vatican ambassador because this virus was not terminated in the 90s. So it was really clear where the GOP was going. And I got to say, it does drive me absolutely up a wall that people who rode that shit all the way to 2016, making money, making careers, having books, and suddenly they discover the Republican Party is full of Republicans. And now they're full of remorse and kind of self-congratulation. You know, 
we saw this coming. You know, <laughs> you know, we 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 told them there were fascists in the party. Um, Charlie Sykes <laughs> says to Tom Nichols, you know, we knew, you know, the thing about it is we were right. Isn't that right, Tom Nichols? Yes, Charlie Sykes. That's absolutely right. We were right about everything. And that's why they won't put Charlie Pierce on the show. <laughs> because Charlie <laughs> Pierce would remind them, hey, what about 2018? What about 2016? What about 2012? Oh, no, no, no. That's the before time. We don't talk about that. But it is important to know that the reason Newt Gingrich and people like that are have infested our politics is because they were let out of the box by respectable, well-paid, white, closeted assholes like David Gregory. And using the, the, the megaphone of Meet the Press to make Newt Gingrich respectable when he absolutely should not have been. And there was no check on that. There was nobody a bunch of liberal, but a bunch of liberals writing about it who would take David, Gre- David Gregory to the to the woodshed and and punish him grievously for doing this shit. This was just normal. Letting wing nuts have access to the airwaves was just part of the job of the mainstream media, right up until Donald Trump showed them what they had created. And then they all washed their hands and said, we had nothing to do with this. This wasn't our fault. And they moved on. And that's all I have to say about Newt Gingrich. Can I talk about Devin Nunez then? I do wish you would. He's tired of suing cows. So now he's decided as a whiny litigious baby Mm -hmm. (laughs) to sue Rachel Maddow for being mean. Mean. She She said mean things about me. And she harbors an institutional hostility, hatred, extreme bias, spite, and ill will toward me, the plaintiff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So, uh, she is uh, being sued. MSNBC and Rachel Maddow are being sued for having a marquee news narrative from 2017 to 2019 that mm-hmm. the Trump campaign colluded with Russians to hack the 2016 presidential elections. Yes. That that's apparently false, in which case, um, if they go to court, which they won't. No. Well, part of the reason is NBC is not incorporated in Texas. <laughs> Which is, which is where I believe Devin he filed, filed his lawsuit. lawsuit. Yeah. He has. He filed in Little Sherman, Texas. Uh huh. Yeah. Because you know the Texas Attorney General, who's corrupt, and the Governor, who's corrupt, Republicans will let it go forward. Sure, but there's no court in Texas that has any jurisdiction over no jurisdiction. NBC or I'll MSNBC. Throw it out. Yeah. They'll throw it out. Mm-hmm. But it gets to make headlines for Devin Nunez, where sure. he wants headlines. That's the He's fighting thing. back against Rachel Maddow and the liberal MSNBC. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if but I if I were MSNBC, I'd be wanting it to go to court. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, no, I, and I didn't insist on cameras in the court. Cameras in the court. Mm-hmm. Uh, depose Nunez under oath. Oh, yeah. Force him to plead the fifth as plaintiff. Like, I can't testify because I'll be testifying against myself. And do discovery oh, and yeah. discovery and discovery. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Until he whines that he just wants to drop the lawsuit. Uh, And, you know, it's not going to go to court, but I would love for it to go to court and and establish a precedent that news reporters need to tell the truth. (laughs) Yeah. Because, you know, imagine what Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton will do if Fox News (laughs) with that precedent. Well, Well, I I can only assume that um, since he's suing over... Russian collusion being you know yeah. a naughty bad story that's like Glenn Greenwald will file an amicus brief with him uh-huh. because uh-huh. you know that's what he does he just sticks up for the little guy and the little guy in this case is Devin Nunes because Glenn hates MSNBC because they right. won't have him on no more right they right. won't pay me no more they won't and put then, me on and then no there's, more there's another Republican who stuck his foot in it this uh, week in fact yesterday mm-hmm. Mark McCloskey oh yeah you know, who's right across the street from us in misery. Yeah, in Missouri. I was, he, I, was t- I was told that many people pronounce it misery because that's yeah, what's happening well, these to that days, state. Yeah, yeah, it's very sad. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mark McCloskey uh, was pardoned by the white wing governor of Missouri, and that's not a typo. Mike Parson yeah. pardoned uh, Mark McCloskey and his wife for waving guns around in their mm-hmm. front yard yeah. at Black Lives Matter protesters. Who were... Walking on past the them on the, on the sidewalk, yeah, and they were go. They were walking to the mayor's house. They did not know the McCloskeys from anybody. Right. Didn't care who whose house that was. They were not breaking through 
onto their yard or anything. No. But here come black people on my sidewalk and they both, they said this couple, as many people know, they've seen the videos, ran out into their yard with guns, waving them around to protect their property from yeah. black people. Mm-hmm. And um, New York Magazine summarized uh, the McCloskey's crimes. In yeah. June of 2000, Mark McCloskey pleaded guilty to misdemeanor fourth degree assault. He pleaded guilty and he was fined $750. Patricia McCloskey pleaded guilty to misdemeanor harassment and was fined $2,000. The couple also gave up the high-powered guns they used in the confrontation, which came as marches, marchers headed toward a protest at the home of St. Louis Mayor Lydia Crewson. They were not at all targeting the McCloskeys in any way. Again, they passed by the McCloskeys' home, And uh, a special prosecutor determined that the protesters were peaceful just walking by. Mm -hmm. Uh, The protesters did make many phone videos of the McCloskeys waving their guns around. Yes. Um, But, of course, now Mark McCloskey is running for the U.S. Senate as a Republican because Fox made him famous. And why not cash in? Hey. Uh, So he was on Sean Hannity this week. And... uh, what he says that what everyone saw on the tape of a white guy flipping out at dark skinned people in his neighborhood was actually a religious experience for him. Drift glass. Oh, oh, really? Here's what religion what he would said. that be? Here's what he said to Sean. Uh-huh. Sean was running, you know, an infomercial for his campaign for Senate. Mm-hmm. Um, God came knocking on my door last summer, disguised as an angry mob, and it really did wake me up. And I read that statement several times, and I still can't get beyond the fact that Mark McCloskey just admitted that he waved a gun at God. Well, (laughs) you know, when your arm's too short to box with God, Blue Gal, you got to get an AK-47 to do the job (laughs) to finish him off. I never learned this at Divinity School, I got to tell you. No one has. And and McCloskey's angry mob was was a bunch of kids, you know, a bunch of young people. Walking on the sidewalk outside his house, Black Lives Matter protesters heading for the mayor's residence. Uh, he, he said they were an angry mob knocking on his door. Flying spaghetti monster forbid they yeah. should have knocked on his door. Uh-huh. God himself would have a Second Amendment stand your ground gunshot wound <laughs> from from Mark McCloskey. Well, and they knocked on his door. First of all, if I may, yeah, um, they didn't come anywhere near his door. Nowhere. They were walking past his house on the way to a protest, right. and this freaked out snowflake white asshole jumped on his lawn with his wife and cosplayed up and waved their guns around as if they were under attack. Mm-hmm. Second, if a mob actually directed by God comes knocking at your door, everyone knows that according to the book of Genesis, you're supposed to offer them your two virgin daughters. <laughs> That's the book of Genesis. Yeah, the Bible has a lot of weird shit in it. So and when that's the mob, one of the stories is kind of weird. When the mob came to Lot's house. Yep, that's right. He said, please take my virgin daughters and do whatever you want with them. Yep. But the mob refused. And then the and then God struck, struck them blind and then blew the city up, et cetera. But everyone knows when God directs a mob at your house, you offer them your children. Because that's what the Old Testament says. The Old Testament says that. But mm-hmm. meanwhile, the governor pardoned Mark McCloskey. Yes, he did. And and I don't know why conservatives want to kill God, except that they always have wanted to kill God well, when you think about it. <laughs> and, and McCloskey has got a competitor in the race across the river mm-hmm. from Billy Long. Billy Long. Billy Long, who went didn't go on Sean Hannity's show. He went on Tucker Carlson's show. Right. To, uh, to you're all, talk. You're all going after that. Trump endorsement. That's the only thing you need in Republican politics. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and he had to get up there and talk about how uh, you and me and our commie overlords, Blue Gal, are loading up illegal immigrants onto domestic commercial flights with no ID or nothing and shipping them all over the country, possibly COVID infected. And they're even forcing them to go to states where people are forced to wear masks. But these these illegals who probably are carrying disease are not being forced to wear masks. No, they're just being shipped willy nilly everywhere. Even to New York, where people eat outdoors, where the shooting happens, 
because of defund the police. Yeah, right. He did and that the in fact 67. that they're in they're in federal government custody no. at the time of their transport means that they have some legal status here just is totally missed by these well, folks. And the judges had to take three fifths of a point off for not <laughs> not managing to cram critical race theory, Hunter Biden's laptop Brain cells, and, yes. and Barack Obama's uppity Negro birthday party mm-hmm. into that 60 seconds he Barack had on. Barack Obama's uppity Negro birthday party. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but, but you got to give it to Billy Long. He did. He rang all the bells. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, on this side of the Mississippi, while the Missouri governor was pardoning gun-toting lunatics and outlawing abortion, our governor eliminated a loophole in the gun laws that have gotten people killed mm-hmm. and announced that there's going to be statewide mask mandates and vaccine requirements for some state workers. Yep. That's what's happening on in the blue state. He's been doing right a lot of good this week. Yes, he has. Speaking of which. Let's, let's do a news roundup. Well, why don't we? Uh, senators unveiled the final details of the $1 trillion infrastructure proposal this week. The more than 2,700 page bipartisan bill was finalized Sunday night and it includes money for roads, transit systems, and high speed internet access. It is the first phase of President Biden's infrastructure plan. New York City announced vaccines will be required to work at or enter any restaurant or other establishment. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the state of Florida, uh, COVID-19 hospitalizations are up 13% from the previous peak in July of 2020. Not last month, but its previous p- peak last year. It now has more new COVID cases than ever before and has become the nation's epicenter for the virus, accounting for 23% of all new cases in the United States. And fr- Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is dealing with the fact that he has caused his state to become a plague factory by saying... I'm sick of the judgmental stuff. Boy, that's right up there with my enemies will use this against me. Yes, yes, they will. David Vitter. Yes, they will. Reporting on COVID-19 resurgence is media hysteria. And the good news is our hospitals are open. (laughs) Come on down to Florida. I don't mean to laugh at people suffering and being, you know, dying in hospitals of this disease. But when the Governor Death Santis says... Yeah, but the hospitals are open. Yeah. Come on down. <laughs> Plenty of room. I'm uh, I'm telling you, the states where there are mask mandates and the virus is not killing people en masse like it is in Florida mm-hmm. are going to start saying you can't come to New Jersey and, and Illinois from Florida. Right. We're having a ban on flights from Florida. Yeah. No. And, and uh, Thanksgiving is canceled if you're not vaccinated. In households where people are being sane. It's time to tell your family members, n- no. No, you can't come. You can't, you can't come. come. And I'm not here. coming to your house. Right. Forget it. And that might work. Oh, yeah. Uh, also in Florida, a top RNC official has spread anti-vaccine rhetoric and hysteria and misinformation, comparing the Biden administration's vaccine efforts to Nazi-era brown shirts and twice calling the vaccines the mark of the beast comparable to a false god you know what i don't want these people to die they want me to die they're they're they are they are so i've said this a million times you cannot underestimate how deeply they hate this country yeah and if if making themselves into human disease vectors will destroy the country for god then they're gonna do it and make trump look good and make well yeah because trump you know he's he's owning the libs Dying to own the libs. That's that's where we're at. Uh-huh. Um, I did love, we're th- recording this late Thursday afternoon, and this afternoon, someone tried to ask Joe Biden about Governor DeSantis, and Biden just looked at the reporter and said, Governor who? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, according to Gallup, 40% of Americans say the COVID situation is getting better. That's down from 89% in June. It's because of this Delta variant. Yeah. Uh, 45% say it's getting worse. Most Americans now expect COVID disruption to persist through the end of 2021 or later. Yep. That's a reasonable expectation. Yep. And if if you're pissed about that, go thank a Republican. Uh, the FDA plans to fully approve the Pfizer vaccine by the start of the next month, which, you know, 
Get that just that. Ta- that takes away a major Republican talking point about yeah. the vaccine. It's I want to gonna... go to all those people on Twitter who said, well, it's not FDA approved. I don't, because I know they're just going to change to another talking Bounce point. Bounce right off. It's, yeah. it's, it's not, yeah. they're, they're, these people cannot be saved. They can be, they're physically, they can be saved. If they can get pressured into taking a vaccine and protecting themselves, they can save their own lives. But mentally, they cannot be brought back to, to rationality ever. They're gone for good. And good riddance, frankly. Biden ordered the U.S. military to move toward mandatory COVID vaccinations. And one Fox outlet said, U.S. military scrambles to vaccine soldiers, (laughs) to vaccinate soldiers. No, they don't. And I went, no, they aren't. That's a false. Yeah. The U.S. military follows orders from the commander in chief. Yeah. So they'll do what they always do. They'll do what they're told to they'll do. They'll line up and roll their sleeves up and take their shot. You know, yeah. that's, this is just, well, you know, again, scrambling is yeah. something that the, the military does when Democrats are in power. The uh-huh. Olympics being a shithole, awful mess is what's true when Democrats are in power. Yeah. Yeah. By the, uh, uh, um, sorry, uh, deficits matter when Democrats mm-hmm. are in power. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the Biden administration is also planning to require foreign visitors to be fully vaccinated, which good for them. And Los Angeles is considering requiring vaccine proof at restaurants, gyms, and outdoor sporting, indoor sporting events. Now, you thought we'd forget, but we didn't forget. According to a report by State Attorney General Letitia James's office, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women, and you know he did. The investigation found that Cuomo engaged in, quote, unwelcome and non-consensual touching and made comments of a, quote, suggestive sexual nature to current and former state employees, as well as a number of women outside of state government. Joe Biden and the entire New York Democratic congressional delegation have called on Cuomo to resign. And the Professional F podcast is calling on Cuomo to resign And that well. should do it. That should put him right, right over the top. Right there. Yeah. But what do they say? We're the professional. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> we, I guess I have to quit. I really loved the way Cuomo handled the very early days of the pandemic in New York. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I thought he did a very good job of unifying the state and communicating. Uh, and now that this has come to light, along with the, as someone pointed out, the lying about the nursing home situation, yes. yep. um, he should resign. And well, I can hold those two ideas in my head at the same time. Well, this is this is the thing. We believe, broadly speaking, for all liberals everywhere, because I, you know, I speak for all liberals everywhere. <laughs> um, we believe in hiring competent public servants to mm-hmm. do a job of work. Right. When they do a good job, we believe in saying, hey, what a good job. You're doing a good job. Could have done a little better here. Maybe you fucked up there, et cetera. If they do a bad job, we say, hey, you're doing a bad job. If you do a really bad job, you should be fired. Mm-hmm. There's no contradiction in any of this. Right. We believe in competent public service. If you fail at that, you should not be doing public service. If you fail as spectacularly as Cuomo had, you should be criminally charged for sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's nothing but inconsistent But it is really, to me, remarkable the parallels between what Cuomo clearly did. is being accused of and did uh-huh. and what Trump has been accused of and did. And, and Trump and there's gets. a tremendous double standard in the political parties. Well, there's, there's two political parties with two radically different views of – how Women. everything should work. <laughs> yes, yeah. right, right. The State Department is investigating the whereabouts of a $5,800 bottle of whiskey the Japanese government gave to Mike Pompeo in 2019. Narrator, he drank it. Um, <laughs> um, and this this is the thing. This is a small story. And Mike Pompeo was a smug fascist asshole who used taxpayer to be president. money. president. Yeah, yep. used taxpayer money to throw parties to advance his political career and mm-hmm. use state, uh, federal government employees to to basically pr- promote his his professional career. All bunch of shit he shouldn't have done, smirking the whole time. Because it's like, I, I got the greatest job in the world. No one's going to touch me. I can do whatever I want. But you know what? A $1,500 bottle of whiskey is a real specific thing. And mm-hmm. that's got the flavor of a real story. Mm-hmm. It's small, but it's understandable. Like, shit, there's whiskey that you can get for $1,500 a bottle. And this asshole lost it. That's that lands a lot more real world. You got to be shitting me mm-hmm. than than mm-hmm. a lot of the big abstract that that stuff that. Well, he this is why Donald Trump should have been impeached for porn star hush money. Absolutely, and you've you you even have a song about that, Blue. Gown. I do, uh-huh. but I'm not going to sing it right now. No, because we got to move on. 
Mexico plans to do what American citizens can't do, sue U.S.-based gun makers. Mexico claims that lax controls over weapons sales are fueling arms trafficking and violence. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tragic stories this week. A third police officer who responded to the U.S. Capitol insurrection has died by suicide, according to the Metropolitan Police Department. That brings the total to four. There are four who have committed suicide total. Yeah. 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 Uh, Very sad. Trump said the Capitol Police officers who spoke to Congress are pussies, quote unquote. Was this on his microblog? Probably. Or uh, to a friend. Trump has expressed anger that the officers blamed him for the riot he clearly inspired and speculated they were being used as pawns by who else? Nancy Pelosi. Damn you, Pelosi, in your in your far-reaching conspiracies, arranging for a riot to make Donald Trump look bad on the day of <laughs> January 6th. That's Jesus. the argument. She, she's fucking brilliant. She she left she left the uh, guard down at the House and the Capitol building yeah. so that Donald Trump's supporters could come in and overthrow the government. Well, and this it's is her fault. This is Hillary Clinton in the in the in the in the war room cackling right. as Benghazi burned, watching it all While happen she was on watching close it. television, yes. and enjoying every minute of it. Yeah, they, this is the, it. They just tell you know there's five basic lies. They're ba- they're different flavors each time, but it's Nancy Pelosi. We've spent you know decades making her into a bug eyed commie monster, and so anytime she comes anywhere near anything, we can point to her and say, "See, see, Pelosi." And the base will just go, yeah, 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 Pelosi, bad, and forget all about the fact that you are a party of traitors, corrupt, seditious, traitors, and liars. Um, And if you are a Republican, you support that. And I don't know how you can live with yourself. Um, Lindsey Graham tested positive for COVID-19 and has had flu-like symptoms despite being vaccinated. This week, we also learned that Trump pressed his Justice Department to claim, to just claim uh-huh. That the 2020 election results were corrupt, quote unquote. Yep. Trump pressed top Justice Department officials late last year to declare that the election was corrupt, even though they found no instances of widespread fraud. Just declare it's corrupt and I'll do the rest. Mm-hmm. Is what reminds, he said. If this reminds you of Ukraine, it should, because that it is should. exactly what he did. It's with Ukraine. exactly the same. Just Using, make, we need a story about it being corrupt, and then yeah. I'll blow that up on you're, my We need media. a story yeah. of you opening an investigation into Joe Biden's kid. Yep. And it doesn't have to be true. Just, just say it is, and I'll do the rest, which is – Using the might of the federal government to try to pressure an ally into faking up an investigation yeah. just to create a headline to destroy your political opponent. He was impeached for that. Yes, he was. And he was not removed because the Republican Party is full of traitors and seditious, corrupt assholes. Uh, this week, Texas Governor Abbott says he plans to call a special session after special session to make fleeing Democrats consider his voting bill. Nothing about the power grid. Now, the top priority is making sure as many people as possible who might vote Democrat are not allowed to do so. Right. That's all they care about. Uh, This week, Trump called the U.S. women's soccer team leftist maniacs. (laughs) And he blamed their lack of a gold medal on wokeness. However, there was a gold medal winning team from Canada that uh, kneeled in favor of racial justice and did all the woke stuff that uh, Trump claims the women's team did, and they won the gold. So he uh, he needs to explain that. Of course, he won't. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, in local news, you might remember a guy named Rod Blagojevich. He's an impeached former governor, disgraced loser, an ex-convict who Donald Trump pardoned. He is suing the state of Illinois for the right to run for office again in this state. But he says he has no plans to run, which means right. he's doing the Caitlyn Jenner playbook. Right. Yeah. I want to be made relevant again so I can get a TV deal or whatever. Yeah, he wants back on the radio. Yes. And thanks to listener Steve for this. Illinois recreational weed sales hit a <laughs> record $128 million in July, helped by a late month boost from the Lollapalooza Festival. Go figure. Yeah. Uh, that should have been canceled, but we appreciate well, the money. We, I appreciate the money, and I appreciate that they checked vaccine records with everybody that went in. So they did. They you checked know, vaccine records. If you're, if you're gonna have it, at least you did the least you could do. That's right. That's absolutely right. 
Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's Internet Kitty is a trio of fish. Ooh. These Ooh. fish were sent in by listeners Jim and Bill, and they're named Bacon, Lettuce, and Tomato. Oh, I pity bacon. Okay. I that's, know. That's not... A fish name... I, wasn't that the working title for fish name called Wanda? I, a fish, a fish, a named, fish bacon? named Bacon? I, I think I'm so. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And of course, bacon, lettuce, and tomato eat freshly poured fish food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve <laughs> pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your fish will swim around the tank and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Bacon, Lettuce, and Tomato at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Speaking of unions, rest in peace. Mr. Yes. Trumpka, Mr. Trumpka, the passed head away of today. the AFL-CIO, we yeah. will miss you. We sure will. A strong voice for values that I agree with. Yep. But hashtag jail to joy. Yeah. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information, all of it's there. We have Both Sides Don't t-shirts. We do. Which are very timely. And I, I'm really um, kicking myself. I, I, I need to get a couple of our, our other graphics um, posted to our, our merch shop. Like I've no had requests. Fair Remembering Stuff t-shirts. No Fair Remembering Stuff and Burn the Lifeboats. Burn We've the Lifeboats t-shirts. We need for those. to get those, yeah. And I just want to contact whoever did George P. Bush's beer koozies. <laughs> and um, see if we can get the same deal he got. If we could do this, could you arrange for Donald Trump to uh, screw us over after we pledge our eternal fealty to him? Hey, if anybody out there does do stuff with Zazzle yeah, and knows how to post stuff to Zazzle and would like to help us out, send us an email sure. at proleftpodcast at gmail.com. We'll see uh, if you can help us out. We'd appreciate that. We will mention your name on this podcast. We'll mention your name on the air. Yes, we That's will. about all we can do, but we will do that. Yeah. Uh, please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, it turns out that while we were away, the Internet Kitties convinced the cat sitter that they get freshly caught salmon three times a day, and they are still very smug about that. <laughs> where did she, Where did she catch the salmon? Though? I don't want to know. I just <laughs> I think when we're doing BLT as our our pets, and we're talking yeah. about freshly caught fish, we shouldn't be talking about should, catching salmon. There's something salmon. really wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt right, so I did it anyway. Um, thank I you, also, Glass. I should also – oh, thank you, Blue Gal. Uh, post-show, I should also mention that when we traveled to Chicago, we did find uh, the place where my favorite big and tall men's store had been transplanted to the suburbs when you were mm -hmm. up there. And uh, I still only found one pair of pants that fit me. Still only found one <laughs> pair of pants that fit him. Damn. He did. I mean, only this is the store. One. I put Murray's kids through college, I swear to God. <laughs> When this place was in Chicago, and they still don't cut clothes to fit someone like me. So, well, you're you're six foot eight, and you're a thirty eight waist, and that's too thin, right, for to, most uh, pants to, pants orderers. I think I think it, I think it is an ordering problem. Yeah, people don't order those for retail sales. And, yeah. and if you see me in your store um, looking downcast, I'm, I'm used to it by now. I'm used to mm -hmm. just finding one thing or two things at any place I go. Uh, but please don't say we can have it shipped to you because I don't <laughs> want to have it shipped. I could be sitting at home. I'm coming to you as a retailer to support your business, your brick and mortar business. And they were very nice. And I got some other stuff there and it was all great. My wife talked me out of getting uh, a neon blue um, shirt. Cab shirt with no collar yeah. that looked like something from... Yeah. 80, 1982. It it, yeah. it did. And it looked like it had been on the shelf since 1982. Since then, yeah. Um, And so, you know, the better angel was with me and I avoided <laughs> fashion disaster. But I got to say, revisiting old haunts uh, with my wife was a blast in Chicago. It was fun. 
It, it really was fun was. watching you try on shirts and some of them actually fit you. That was Oh, my nice. God. I don't look like Frankenstein in this. This fits me. Oh, my God. What do I do? And uh, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that at the end and you can cut it or not as you see fit. All right. Thank love you, darling. You. Love you, darling. Love Bye. you, too. Bye. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.